Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printer here. In today's video, I'll be introducing you to Flask Babble. So this will be a two-part series. This video will cover numbers and dates, and the next video will cover translations. So Flask Babble is an extension in Flask for localization, meaning that if you change the locale of the user, they will see something different. In this case, different a different language, a different way of formatting dates, or a different way of formatting numbers. So if you anticipate your app being used by people who speak different languages or just live in different countries, then Flask Babel may be useful for you. Before I get into the code, I just wanna show you my Flask cheat sheet here. It is a bunch of really common things that you would do in Flask. So if you're somewhat new to Flask, I think this cheat sheet would be useful for you. So if you wanna download it, just go to prettyprinted.com slash Flask cheat sheet. There's also going to be a link in the description below if you wanna download the cheat sheet. So you can check that out there. So to get started with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this index route here that I already have. It has a template here that has nothing in it. And I'm going to modify it to just show you what it looks like when you modify things like numbers and dates. So I'll start with numbers because they're pretty straightforward. So the first thing you need to know before you even get into the numbers is that you wanna know the locale that you're targeting. In this particular case, I'll start with the US because that's where I'm from. But then I'll show you how to use, let's say a Swedish one and then a, a German one. So let's start with a US number. So in the US, numbers are formatted a certain way and in other countries, they're formatted a different way. So if I inherit numbers from Flask Babel, so to do that, from Babel, import numbers, and make sure you have Flask Babel installed. So pip install Flask Babel, pretty common way of installing Python extensions. So you have numbers from Babel, and then what you want to do is you want to call the format decimal function to allow you to change how a number looks. So format decimal, and in this case I'll try 1.2345. So that's the way I would write it, and then I need to pass in a locale. So the locale is the typical code that you've probably seen before. In this case, it's either EN or ENUS. So the first is the language and then the country. So in this case, it's English and then US. So English and the US. And if I return this to the template, so I'll just add this to a dictionary first. I'll call it results. And let's say US num is going to be US num, just to make the what I need to pass to the template a little easier to manage. So results equals results. And then what I'll put here is a header. So header US number. And then I will add in the results US num. Okay, so I will then close this out. And from there I can see what this number looks like in the United States. So 1.234. So that looks familiar to me, but if I were to use, say, Swedish, so numbers, format, decimal, and then one, two, three, four, five, and change the locale to be SV, SE, so SV for Swedish and SE for Sweden, and then I pass that number to my template, so I'll use SC num and then sc underscore num there, and then I can view it here. So sc number for Sweden, and let's do results sc num. And then let's see if there's any difference between the two numbers. So you see here, I have the same exact number, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and of course there's a decimal after the one. Let's see if they're formatted any differently. And when I run that, it is formatted differently. So in the US, there's a period there, and in Sweden, there's a comma. So if I were to see that number in the US for Sweden, I would be a little confused. But if I were in Sweden and I saw the US number, I'd be confused. So let's do one more, and let's see which one this one takes. So this one's going to be German. So format decimal, 
and I'll pass in one, two, three, four, five again. Locale. So language is German or Deutsch or however you pronounce it. <laughs> and then the country is Deutschland or Germany. So I will then pass this to the template. It's in the results dictionary. And then I can view it here. So DE number results DE num. And then let's see what it looks like. So in this case, it shares the formatting with Sweden. So if I were to change the numbers to something else, so instead of having a period there, it would be 12,000 instead of just 1.2. I change them. Now we see there's a difference. So in the US, there's a comma between the two and the three. In Sweden, there's a space. And then in Germany, there's a period. So it displays the correct formatting depending on the locale that you pass in. So that's a pretty straightforward example with numbers. Now let me show you an example with dates. So before I use dates, let me import some things from date time. So from date time, import date and date time. And I might need time too. And then what I want to do is I want to format dates according to the locale. So first I'll create a random date. So D, this date is going to be, let's say 2007. And then the first number is the month. The second number is the day. So April 1st, 2004 or 2007. And then what I want to do is I want to create a US date. So a US date is going to be dates. And that dates is going to come from Babel. So that needs to be imported from Babel here. So dates. So with the dates, it kind of works in the same way as format decimal. So instead of format decimal, it's going to be format date. I pass in a date and then I pass in a locale. In this case, the locale will be English in the US. And I will add this to my dictionary of values here. So US date, and I'll just pass in US date. And then I'll add it to the template. US date, so results, and then US underscore date, and just close out the header tag. So April 1st, 2007 is the date. If I run it, and hopefully it didn't crash, it did because I saved too early. So let me just start the app again. So if I go here, I see the date in the United States is April 1st, comma, 2007. So pretty straightforward there. Now let's say I want to display what that date will look like in Germany. So I'll have a DE date here. So DE date. So dates, format date. I pass in the dates object that I have, that I created before. And then I'll pass in the locale. So the locale will be DE, DE. And I'll add that to my results dictionary. So DE date, DE date. And finally, I need to view it in my template. So let's see, DE date. So the date in Germany, it's going to be DE date and close out the headers. So if I run this again, I see the date looks completely different. So in the US, I see April 1st, 2007, but for Germany, I see 01.04.2007. So once again, it's one of those things where if I were in Germany, looking at a US date might be a little confusing. And if I'm in the US, which I am, looking at this date, is a little confusing. Like for one, I would think this is January 4th, 2007, but since I created it myself, I know it's supposed to be April. So it's pretty straightforward this way, and you can do other things similar like format date time. So let me give you one example of date time because it's just as straightforward as using the date. But of course, instead of a 
a date object, you're using a date time object. So I'll create a date time. I'll say DT is equal to date time. I'll use 2008 as time, let's say August 4th, no, August 3rd, and then 3.30. Then what I want to do is I want to format that date time using, let's see, so US date time, I'll create this. US date time is going to be dates.format and instead of format date, it's going to be format daytime. Pass in the daytime object and then the locale. And we'll see what it looks like. So in this case, US English. And I will then pass this in. So US daytime, it's going to be US daytime there. So then in the template, US daytime. US underscore date time. And then I'll close that out. So let's see what happens. Okay, so like I said, it was for August 3rd, 2008. And then here I have the time 3.30 p.m. And if I simply change the locale, so instead of creating a new variable, I'll just change the locale. So I'll use, let's do Sweden. And if I refresh, I should get something different. I get three, then August dot 2008, and then 1530. So it's a lot different. And if I saw that in the US, I'd be a little confused. But like I said, that's normal in another country. So as long as you have the locale, then you can display whatever you want. So that's all I want to cover in this video. Let me change this back to US for when I allow you to download the code, which you can download from the link in the description below. Uh, that's all I want to cover in this video. In the next video, I'll cover how to handle locales more directly and how to actually translate text in your app because that's the more interesting use case. Dates and time and numbers are somewhat interesting, but not nearly as interesting as translating text. So I'll show you how to do that in part two of this intro to flat intro to flask babble series so if you have any questions about this you can leave a comment down below if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to my channel already please subscribe make sure you download that flask cheat sheet if you haven't already and that is it for this video so i will talk to you next time and i will well really i'll talk to you in part two of this series thanks for watching